today we are going to discuss a stat medical topic, which is respiratory illnesses in children, so within paediatrics. Um, so respiratory illnesses are very common, especially in kids, and particularly we're recording this in December, so over the winter, um, that's when they kind of hit their peak. So we're going to talk through a few different conditions that we see quite regularly, either in GP or within the hospital. Mm. with beads that you think about your approach to your examination. So you want to have generally a hands-off approach and make sure that you're building a good rapport and and depending on the age of the child or baby, um, you might want to get the parents holding them, you might want to use distraction techniques or games. It's important not to just dive straight in with your stethoscope or with oxygen mask, etc., the worst thing you can do a lot of the respiratory children anyway is upset them. If, yeah. you, if you make them breathe quicker, make them cry, it's just entering a world of pain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so you're still roughly following your ACE approach, but you've got to be quite hands off with it. And also, you might need to be a bit opportunistic. So, for example, with a baby, if they're nice and settled when you're first looking at them, that might be the time to have a listen to their chest before you've done other parts of your examination that more than likely you're going to upset them and get them to start crying. And I think the key is remembering the investigations are the, the exception rather than the rule of paediatrics. So actually we don't need to do blood tests in a lot of these children. We don't even need to do blood pressures in a lot of them. So asthma is, uh, can be quite common in children and everyone knows the cardinal features of asthma. They're defined by episodes of recurrent wheeze, uh, recurrent winter illnesses um, with a reversible element to the disease. In children, the age group that it affects typically uh, is over the age of five years, but there is some overlap with other respiratory disorders, particularly with viral-induced wheeze. So asthma typically presents with a wheeze, a cough, uh, and signs of respiratory distress, often with an atopic history, either uh, in the child themselves or within the family. So atopic symptoms uh, encompass hay fever, eczema, and other general allergy-type symptoms. And another feature of uh, asthmatic children is that they uh, have an interval to their symptoms. So their presentation tends to be fluctuant, but they always have a relatively low grade level of respiratory kind of compromise. So they typically are quite prone to colds, flus and illnesses of the respiratory uh, system. But there is always that reversible element uh, to the disease. The treatment is the same as it is for adults, uh, with your salbutamol, your ipratropium, your steroids and your magnesium if they're sick, uh, with maintenance therapy uh, in the interim. So as I previously mentioned, asthma tends to have quite a a large overlap with other respiratory uh, diseases, uh, but most typically with viral-induced weeds. Polly, would you like to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, viral-induced wheeze is, um, as the name suggests, so where you have a viral infection that's causing a bit of bronchoconstriction and wheeze. And I think often parents of children who have viral-induced wheeze are quite concerned that their child has asthma. It can be important to sort of distinguish it between asthma. It tends to be a younger age group, so from about age of one to up to seven years. In distinguishing it from asthma, it's important to explain to the parents that actually most children do grow out of it, and it doesn't mean that they're going to go on to develop asthma. In terms of the presentation of viral-induced wheeze, it's essentially a a child with a wheeze, cough, and um, signs of respiratory distress. What does a wheeze sound like, Polly? Um, a wheeze sounds like. <sighs> <laughs> what does your wheeze sound like, Katrina? <sighs> <laughs> that was quite bad. That was just a sigh. That was. I won't give an impression. It's an expiratory musical noise, quite high pitched. How, how can you even do a wheeze? It's quite hard. Yeah. No, you can't do it. Can't really. In terms of the treatment, that is similar to how you would treat um, asthma in the sense that you do give bronchodilators. The advice regarding giving steroids does tend to change 
from time to time, but short courses of steroids are probably unlikely to do any harm. So many people will give children with viral induced wheeze steroids as well as bronchodilators. Yeah, it's that risk versus harm ratio, isn't it? And actually, I think, you know, a three-day course of steroids to a child is actually very low and there might be a small benefit. So one of the other common respiratory illnesses that we see in very young children is bronchiolitis, uh, which is a viral infection, usually uh, RSV um, as the cause. Um, So it causes a low respiratory tract infection, which leads to fluid buildup within the bronchioles. The children that it affects four tend to be younger, so they tend to be between the age of zero to one year. And they generally tend to present with a cough, they're wheezy, there's evidence of respiratory distress, they'll also have fever. And one particular presentation is that they may also struggle with feeding as well. When we're talking about the management of bronchiolitis, it's largely supportive. But the key things to consider are the oxygen saturations and the feeding amounts. So if they're saturating less than 92%, you tend to give some wafting oxygen. Um, we can consider things like uh, Optiflow, which is humidified oxygen, um, or respiratory support in, in severe cases, so you can, you know, just like you would normally through sort of invasive uh, ventilation if required. But as I mentioned before, the other key aspect is the feeding. If they're feeding less than 50% of their required, then we tend to admit them, mainly for observation. But again, at the extreme end of the spectrum, we can put an NG tube down just to support their feeding. Ultimately, there's nothing extra we can do. So bronchodilators don't work. Steroids don't work. There's no real inflammation in the bronchioles. And ultimately, because of the age group, most children don't actually have beta-2 receptors. So generally, children develop those after around sort of nine months of age. So subutamol generally is ineffective in that, that age group. And one of the other key things that we see quite commonly, Polly, it's uh, normally at 2 a.m. in the emergency department, is we get a pre-alert for a, for a kid with stridal. Firstly, Polly, my question is, what does stridal sound like? <sighs> oh, that's not bad. It's better than your wheeze, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Max, have you got a stridal impression? <sighs> Between us. Sorry, I'm just preparing myself. <laughs> 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 oh, I went. Yeah, they're all really good. Well done. Oh, so, so croup then, what's, tell us about that. So croup, also with a long name of laryngotracheobronchitis, is another viral infection. So it's normally parainfluenza or influenza that causes inflammation in the upper airway. And this tends to affect children between six months and six years. So the classic presentation is a cough that we tend to call a seal bark. So it's a high-pitched cough and stridor, which tends to be worse at night time. You may also have a low-grade fever and respiratory distress if severe. The treatment for croup is with dexamethasone, and this is given to reduce swelling. You can also use nebulised budesonide if they can't tolerate oral dex, and if it's really severe, you can use nebulised adrenaline. In the community settings, in GP, you'll often get parents coming in with a kid that actually looks pretty well, but is giving you a really good history and a good impression of their seal-like cough the previous night. And I think especially uh, especially parents that have had kids with creep before can know what to look for. Mm. And I think the NICE guideline says that regardless of severity, you give dexamethasone. Mm, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So you do end up with, with kids that come in looking all right, but with a convincing history, and you just tend to give them all the sap use of dexamethasone. And there's also a score, I think, Matt. Yeah, so we can use the Wesley score, which helps identify the severity of croup, which either brings it out as mild, moderate or severe. But as you say, I think the key take home message is get the dexamethasone in early. So any any other sort of big thing we need to be a little bit worried about, I suppose, certainly if you've got a really sick looking child, is is pneumonia, isn't it, Katrina? Yeah, so this will present the same as adults do in social um, and can present at any age within children. A cough that might be protective of some sputum and maybe evidence of respiratory distress. Uh, the child may have fever. Often they tend to be sicker than some of the other presentations that we've described. Um, and treatment would be as you would usually treat in adults as well. So getting the sex of six if it looks like it's required. 
And kind of as we were saying earlier on in the podcast, if the child's got good clinical signs, then we don't necessarily need to investigate further. So you may not need a chest x-ray to look for consolidation, just start treatment. So that was a quick run through of the key respiratory illnesses in children. Just to quickly sum up then. So bronchiolitis is a really common disease process that occurs in children less than one year of age. They get a bit of a low-grade fever with some respiratory distress. Uh, the key is to check their oxygen saturations and their, their mad feeding. Vine-induced wheeze is not asthma, but it presents similarly in that you get wheeze with respiratory distress, generally in the age group of about one to seven years old. Asthma is the same as it is for adults, generally in the over fives, marked by recurrent episodes of wheeze, winter illness with that key reversible element, and the interval symptoms which separate it from viral induced wheeze. Croup presents with either a high pitched uh, bark like cough or with some stridor, generally in the age group of six months to six years. Getting some decks in early is really helpful for reducing the airway swelling. And then pneumonia can present in any age group. These kids generally look a little bit sicker and a bit more toxic than the other groups. The key take-home message from me is uh, uh, take, making sure you have that hands-off approach uh, so you don't distress that child unnecessarily uh, and also to be opportunistic when you're doing your examinations. So again, trying to reduce the distress of that child. Uh, I guess another one would be if, patient, if parents are concerned then to take that seriously they know their child best um, so if they're worried that they don't look as well. And finally, just the importance of remembering early escalation if you're worried.